There are a lot of Mega Drive games that never left Japan. Some we're probably better off without, but many left us desperately wanting a western conversion. The thing is, it can be a minefield trying to ascertain which games are worth your time, which games are best avoided, and which you can actually play without any knowledge of the Japanese language. Well hopefully this quick guide will help. In this video I'll run down some of the Japanese exclusive Mega Drive games, give you a brief explanation of the gameplay, and tell you if they're accessible to us westerners. I won't be going over every Japanese only game, a lot of the RPGs and strategy games that don't have English patches are completely unplayable, and there were quite a few F1, Mahjong and sports games I didn't bother with, including numerous golf, baseball and football games. Nor will I be covering them in depth, but you should at least be able to decide whether or not you want to seek them out. The first game on the list is XDR or X Dazedly Ray, one of several horizontal shooters on the list, and being a list of Japanese exclusives, you'd expect nothing less. This one is also exclusive to the console. I guess the appeal of this game hinges on whether or not you enjoy this type of game. Personally, I find a lot of the Mega Drive shooters far too difficult and I just don't have the patience for them. This is very difficult even on easy. There are a lot of tight spaces to fly through and if you touch any scenery you die, which is made more annoying by the fact that enemies can fly through objects. I know XDR has its fans, but I never got on with it and never got very far at all. But being a shooter, it's very accessible and all the menus are in English. Snow Brothers is a cracking port of the Toa Plan arcade game, which happens to be one of my favourite arcade games of all time, brought to the Mega Drive by Tengen. I'm not usually a beat your high score kind of arcade gamer, but this one keeps me coming back again and again. The port is very accurate indeed, from what I can tell it's a very faithful recreation of the original with the same levels. It adds difficulty levels though, which is a courtesy not afforded to you by the arcade game. If you haven't played it, it's a single screen platformer akin to say Bubble Bobble, wherein you play as one of two snowmen, or both in two player co-op. Throw snowballs at enemies to turn them into a giant snowball, then roll that snowball at other enemies. The aim is to kill all enemies on screen in one fell swoop, which triggers a shower of high scoring bonuses to fall from the sky. This is the key to scoring big. Enemies and their behaviours differ, and there are power-ups to increase your movement speed, shot size and range. It's presented in single screens. Defeat all enemies on a screen and you're transported to the next. An absolutely fantastic game and a superb conversion. Everything right down to the music and sound effects is spot on when compared to the arcade original. Again, the menus are in English, so you're good to go. It also has a password save feature. Of all the Mega Drive's Japanese exclusive games, this one would be top of my wish list for a Western release. Golden Axe 3 is one of the better known Japanese only titles on the console, but certainly not the best. In essence, it's more of the same. Generally, a series should improve with each subsequent release, but sadly, Golden Axe 3 is worse than its predecessors. It has four playable characters and the same gameplay mechanics as the rest of the series, but just doesn't hit the spot in the same way as the other entries in the series. Its lack of series progression, most forgettable Golden Axe soundtrack and repetitiveness really let it down. Shame really. Although it never got a physical release, it did get a North American release on Sega Channel. Heavy Unit Mega Drive Special is a version of Heavy Unit the arcade game. Although it pales in comparison to its arcade counterpart, it's far slower and has much less going on on screen, it's very good. A horizontal shooter you control a ship that can change into a mech, or is that a mech that can change into a ship? It has your usual side scrolling shooter staples, various power ups that alter your shot type, some varied enemies and huge bosses. Totally accessible with English menus and it has a difficulty setting, albeit very hard on any setting. After the first level the difficulty ramps up pretty quick. Still lots of fun and a good looking game. Doraemon Yume Dorobu To Seven Nin no Gozans, and I apologise for my awful Japanese pronunciation throughout this video, is a Doraemon platformer. It's exclusive to the Mega Drive and is also the only Doraemon game on the console. 
It's a reasonably good platform game that plays fine without any knowledge of Japanese, albeit unremarkable. You have a projectile weapon which you can shoot at enemies to stun them in place, at which point you can use them as makeshift platforms to jump off. It's okay and even looks quite nice graphically, it's just a bit boring. Arusha de Iku aka Take the A-Train is a Mega Drive entry in the A-Train series. Despite loving A-Train on the Amiga, I couldn't work out what on earth I was doing in this. There's an English patched version, but even then I was absolutely baffled. There doesn't seem to be any tutorial, so I ended up just pressing buttons randomly to no avail. Doesn't seem like a great game anyway, so probably best to give this one a miss either way. Hono no Tokyuji Dodge Danpei is a dodgeball game based on a manga series. At face value it looks great with really vibrant and well drawn graphics. I have no idea what's going on when I play this. All the menus are in Japanese for one. I tried several things for a while and I just couldn't suss out what to press or what to do to actually throw the ball in any significant fashion. Whatever I tried ended up just doing lame passes or very weak throws. There's obviously a knack to this but I couldn't figure it out. Give this one a miss unless you're willing to look up a gameplay tutorial beforehand. Dana Megami Tanjo is an action platformer. You play as a sword wielding woman fighting your way through levels on foot or atop animals and creatures. I suppose it has similarities with Golden Axe but has more platformy elements. The hit detection is also similar to Golden Axe which in my book is not a good thing but character movement is far quicker and smoother. It is accessible for western players as long as you're okay with foregoing the story as on screen dialogue is in Japanese. Not a great game and feels very unfair at points. Dangerous Seed is the first vertical shooter on the list which is more my cup of tea. This is great, good graphics and sound, and most importantly is really fun with some decent power ups to change your shot and has a reasonably pacey speed to it. Pretty damn hard, but has that pattern learning and bullet dodging gameplay typical of vertically scrolling shooters. Menus are in English too, so you're good to go. Ah Harimanada is a sumo wrestling game which actually came to the Game Gear first and was based on a manga of the same name. It actually looks quite good, I love the huge chunky characters. You can pretty much work out what to do with trial and error with this one, but I wouldn't bother as it's terribly boring after a couple of very samey matches. Pepenga Pengo is a Mega Drive version of Pengo the arcade game, but it's a new game rather than being a direct port. Great stuff and all menus are in English. It's presented as a top-down maze, very similar to Bomberman. You're a penguin sliding blocks of ice around to defeat enemies like seals and snowmen, with the aim being to eliminate all enemies on screen before the timer runs out. I do find the bosses very difficult, but like many games of this ilk, you just have to learn its attack patterns. Very cutesy with catchy music and quite cartoony character designs. It has a co-op option for two-player gaming, and the gameplay is simple yet fun to play. From TV animation Slam Dunk, Kyogu Maku Taiketsu, let's just call it Slam Dunk, is a basketball game based on the Slam Dunk anime series. Because of this, there's quite a lot of dialogue between matches. I managed to skip through it all and get to games, and the actual basketball portion of the game is playable and is actually pretty good as far as Mega Drive basketball games go. I mean, it's no NBA Live 95. There seem to be quite a few menu options in terms of team selection and match setup as well, so it's a shame I couldn't understand what was going on there. One aspect of the gameplay that annoyed me was when you go past centre court, the viewpoint switches from side on to third person, which can be really disorienting. Thunder Pro Wrestling Retsuden is a wrestling game without very much visual appeal, although seems to have some okay fighting mechanics. I'm not too sure as I didn't quite work out how to effectively defeat opponents, so I spent most of my time getting absolutely battered. It shows quite a lot of blood. This is the only entry in the Fire Pro series to come to the Mega Drive, 
and a Genesis version was planned featuring Jesse Ventura, but that was scrapped. Music is okay, but very repetitive, so it becomes monotonous quickly, and the sound effects are about as basic as they come. I'm not going to say this is a terrible game as I didn't get to grips with the controls enough to judge it properly, but this might be another one where prior knowledge of the controls would come in handy. Slap Fight MD is a port of the Toaplan arcade game Slap Fight, an oddly titled vertical shooter. This feels quite like 16-bit era shooters on the Amiga and Atari ST. Quite basic, but reasonably fun for the time. Maybe because this was a 1986 arcade game being released in 1993. Menus are in English on this one too. There are a variety of weapons to use and the speed is okay, it's just a bit boring. Interestingly, Yuzo Koshiro did the soundtrack for this one, but it's not his best work. Advanced Daisen Ryaku Deutsch Dengeki Sakusen is a turn-based strategy game wherein you're controlling battalions of the German army during World War II, and it even features Hitler on the box art. There's an English patch for this one seen here which makes it very playable. It's reminiscent of Advanced Wars, you move units around a map made up of hexagonal spaces, attacking and defending. When you attack, it cuts to a side-on animation of the two units battling it out, again similar to Advanced Wars. Actually quite fun. Battle Golfer Yui is a weird hybrid of golf game and adventure game. Kind of like Golf Story, but nowhere near as good. This one you can play in Japanese if you're willing to trawl through lots of text via trial and error, but there is an English patch which makes things easier. There's quite a bit of dialogue before each round, so it's much more manageable in English. The actual golf game isn't anything special, so probably not worth the hassle. Wanny Wanny World is a great little arcade style platform game, although this one was developed for the Mega Drive as a reskin of an arcade game called Berlin no Kabe, aka the Berlin Wall. The arcade original was ported to the Game Gear in Japan. Not strictly a Japanese exclusive, as it was also released in South Korea as Crocodile's Land. This has aspects in common with other single screen platform games like Bubble Bobble and the aforementioned Snow Brothers. You control a crocodile who can use a hammer to bash blocks out from walkways in order to make enemies fall into the gaps. Once stuck in the gap, he can bash them. Levels are made up of ladders and these bashable blocks and solid blocks making the platforms. I really like this one, it's good fun. It's no Snow Brothers, but definitely worth a try. Langrissa 2 is a Japanese exclusive sequel to the original Langrissa, which had a North American counterpart called Warsong. This is a turn-based strategy game similar to Fire Emblem. I'm not a huge fan of this kind of game, but it's definitely worth a look if you are. It has some cool battle animations in the same vein as Advance Wars and Fire Emblem 2. It's completely unplayable in the original Japanese of course, but there's an English patched ROM available, which is what I'm playing here. Undead Line, somewhat ironically developed and published by Palsoft, is a vertical shooter, but rather than piloting a ship you're controlling some kind of knight or warrior. The gameplay reminds me of Pocky and Rocky, with you running vertically up the screen, dodging and shooting oncoming enemies. There are power-ups in the form of potions, and you can shoot them to change their effect, so you can decide whether you want to upgrade your shot or shield or whatever. There are a few shot types too, which change your attack range, spread and power. You also have special attacks which send a spiked ball orbiting around you. It's hard, but a really nice touch is that you get to select from six of the levels at the game's start. Once you beat all these, there's a seventh and final level. I love this because even though it's hard, it doesn't feel so repetitive because you can experience any one of these six levels each time. Interestingly, there is an English patch for this one, but it's not necessary as you can play it perfectly well without. You only need that if you're wanting to follow the story. One of the more unique shooters on the Mega Drive and arguably one of the best. Guketsuji Ichizoku was originally an arcade versus fighter, developed and published by Atlas. It's not bad, Mega Drive fighters aren't exactly highly regarded outside of Street Fighter 2 and Mortal Kombat, so this is actually decent considering the competition. 
There's a roster of 8 characters, but special moves seem to be quite limited, making fights quite dull quickly. There are a few different gameplay modes though, and the menu is in English. So if you want to play it, you can, or it did come to North America on the Super Nintendo as Power Instinct. Another great shooter with an English patch is Glay Lancer aka Advanced Buster Hawk. This one's a side-scrolling shooter and it's probably the best of the bunch. As with Undeadline, the English patch is completely unneeded, it is a shooter after all, and menus are in English. In fact, I'm not even sure what the patch is for on this one. Presentation is top notch here with some fantastically uplifting music and cool digitised speech, and the graphics are gorgeous with some well done, albeit a bit hectic, parallax scrolling. At the start of the game you can choose between 7 shot patterns, all of which slightly vary your shot direction and behaviour. By default you can shoot in 16 directions using the D-pad, and your ship can obtain 2 options which increase your firepower significantly. One attack pattern I really like is the roll, where your options orbit your ship firing in all directions, and you can toggle to and from a fixed forward shooting mode by pressing C. Once you're powered up and you've got to grips with your preferred shot mode, it can be very satisfying. Regardless of the attack pattern you choose, there are numerous power-ups to collect which alter your shot type. For example, lasers, a flamethrower, and a rebounding shot which bounces around the screen. Collecting these power-ups is announced with some more digitised speech, in the form of a robotic voice stating the power-up's name. It does have difficulty levels, but is still a challenge on easy. But what a great game, really fun, and nails it on all aspects. A Japanese exclusive for many years, but it got a European and North American release on Wii Virtual Console in 2008. Momono Hunter Yoko Dai 7 no Keishu is an action platformer based on a manga and anime called Devil Hunter Yoko. You play as a sword wielding young woman, fighting her way through some very mediocre platforming levels. As well as swinging the sword, you can hold down the attack button to create a shield, which can also be shot at enemies returning like a boomerang. It's slow and boring and feels very unfair at times. Plays fine without understanding Japanese though. Metal Fangs is a console exclusive top-down racing game, which you wouldn't guess from the name or the box art. The graphics are really nice, it has decent music, and the controls are really smooth. Sadly, it's just a bit boring. It has a futuristic, almost cyberpunk theme, which is cool. The menus are a mixture of English and Japanese, and unfortunately, this is where it falls down. Between races, you make various adjustments and upgrades to your vehicle by spending money earned, but I couldn't really work out what I was doing due to the language barrier. Probably not the greatest loss, as the game doesn't seem like it had much long-term appeal anyway. Fire Mustang is a World War II horizontal shooter, originally an arcade game called USAAF Mustang. You're piloting a Mustang, as the name suggests, taking on enemy aircraft. The graphics aren't very flashy, although the planes are quite well drawn, especially the huge bosses, and there's some nice parallax going on with the background scenery. Power-ups upgrade your shot, and you have a fireball smart bomb attack. Simple enough, but it's got a superb sense of speed, and is a pretty fun side-scrolling shooter. Magical Taruruto Kun is a fun and quirky little platformer. It's absolutely gorgeous, with vibrant colours and chunky sprites. Based on a manga of the same name, this was developed by Pokemon creators Game Freak. This one is fine for Westerners as long as you aren't fussed about following the story. The menus are in English. The main gameplay mechanic is using your magic wand to grab and throw objects. These objects can be picked up and thrown at enemies, and you can even catch items thrown by enemies and chuck them back at them. You can also glide in the air using your cape, which looks kind of like bat wings. If I had a complaint, it's that it's clearly aimed at kids. It's very cutesy with its graphics and music, and the gameplay is quite simplistic and easy, but it's a well-made platformer nonetheless. Worth a try for sure. Sio Blade is a point and click, making it usually completely unplayable. There is, however, a translation patch adding full English text. This sadly doesn't speed up the pace, 
text should not appear so slowly on screen in any game. Nobody reads this slowly. It's so ridiculous I didn't have the patience to give it more than 5 minutes. Even so, if you're willing, the patch makes it fully playable. Most of you will be familiar with Puyo Puyo, the falling block puzzle game where you have to link four of these blobs in order to make them disappear. Very much like Tetris or Columns, it's a classic gameplay formula that works well. Both Puyo Puyo and Puyo Puyo 2 on the Mega Drive are good fun, and if you're willing to guess your way through the menu then they play absolutely fine. But to be honest, you might as well just play Dr. Robotnik's Mean Bean Machine, which is a Puyo Puyo game reskinned for the West. King Colossus is an action adventure game said to be similar to The Legend of Zelda. Honestly, I hardly gave this one much time as it would take too long to form an opinion, but at a glance it looks pretty decent. The graphics and sound are excellent. The reason I mention it is there's an English patch ROM available seen here, without which games like this would otherwise be unplayable without a knowledge of Japanese. Master of Weapon is another vertical shooter, a port of a Taito arcade game. You're piloting a ship over a city, and the raised roadways create a cool parallax effect in contrast to the ground below. You've got a button for your forward shot and a button to drop bombs on ground-based vehicles, plus a smart bomb special. Bosses are pretty good and the game is really fast and smooth. Good enough music, although not a fan of the sound effects which are a bit much. Pretty solid overall. Osomatsu kun Hachimecha Gekijo, say that 10 times fast, or Nonsense Theatre, is a very weird platformer. This was actually one of the Mega Drive's launch titles in Japan, and the only one of the four to remain in Japan. You're some kid running about the place with a catapult, taking on some very bizarre enemies. I'm not sure what I was doing wrong, but it kept taking me in circles. This one is perfectly playable without knowing Japanese, but nevertheless I wouldn't bother. Here's a title that we can all recognise, Double Dragon 2 The Revenge. Not exactly sure why this one never made it out of Japan. It's perfectly playable having English text, but does that mean you should play it? Maybe not. Weirdly, PAL and North America got Double Dragon 1 and 3, and Japan only got 2. Not sure if this was once considered a decent game, but either it's aged badly or it was never good to begin with. Probably the ageing, as it's said to be an almost direct port, and I remember loving this arcade game as a kid. It's terribly boring and slow paced, the hit detection leaves a lot to be desired, and attacks frequently go in the wrong direction. Do not recommend. There are two puzzle and action games on the Mega Drive, Ichidant R and Tant R. Both are spin-offs of Bonanza Brothers. These are collections of mini-games just like Bishi Bashi, which I love. Very Japanese and pretty good fun, especially with a friend. With these sorts of games, I find you can work out what to do even if the text is in Japanese, even if some mini-games do take a minute to figure out. This is a good laugh, and some of the mini-games were even the same as those I've seen in Bishi Bashi, like sharpening a pencil or taking photos of passing objects. Eliminate Down is one of the best looking shooters on the Mega Drive, just look at that parallax with the ships in the background, nice. The presentation is just so cool, check out this intro. You have three shot types available which can be toggled between on the fly by pressing C, a forward shot, reverse shot and like a missile spread shot. There are power ups to collect which just boost your shot power, so each of the three shot types becomes more and more aggressive. There are some interesting visual effects too, beyond the parallax scrolling, where enemies move from the background and foreground, creating a nice pseudo 3D effect. This is another one that also made it to Korea, being published there by Samsung. Gorgeous looking and sounding game, and with English text, Eliminate Down is a side-scrolling shooter that should be top of your list to try. Shikinjo is the only Mahjong game I'll include because it's not just a traditional Mahjong game. This is quite a clever twist, as it's a maze puzzle game where you have to navigate to the exit by pushing around Mahjong tiles. 
Once two identical tyres are adjacent, they'll disappear, clearing your path. Sounds easy, but it gets fiendishly difficult pretty quick, but the challenging gameplay is really fun. The Japanese menu has to be skipped through, but once you're in the game it's all good. Mega Panel is a Namco console exclusive moving block puzzle game, much like those little puzzle games we had as kids where you shift tiles around to make a picture. This works much the same, shift the blocks around to make three in a row, at which point they disappear. Text is in English and Japanese, although it's perfectly playable regardless. It's okay as puzzle games go, but nothing to write home about. Monster World 4 is an entry in the Wonder Boy series which only came to the Mega Drive and blimey is it a good one. I could talk about this for ages, so I've decided I'll cover this in depth in a separate video in the future. To get through this you really need to play the English patched ROM. A lot of the game can be played without needing to read text, but several parts will be impassable. For example there's one bit where you have to answer a series of questions to access an area which is nigh on impossible without being able to read Japanese. With the English patch you're all good. The graphics are absolutely stunning for a Mega Drive game and the music is catchy, plus most importantly the gameplay is really good fun. I did get stuck a few times but I'll explain that another time. It has its flaws sure, but this is without a doubt one of the best games featured on this video and has become one of my favourite Wonder Boy games so I 100% recommend it. I'll leave it there but keep an eye out for a full overview of the game at a later date. Star Cruiser is a hugely ambitious game that uses 3D polygonal graphics. Might look a bit naff now, but at the time it was very impressive. It's an RPG that blends quite a few different gameplay styles. As well as walking through locations in first person and interacting with other characters, there are first person shooter and space shooter sections. Being dialogue heavy, you'll absolutely need an English patch to play this one, and thankfully one exists. The conversations are actually very well written, and the characters are well drawn too. The adventure is vast, spanning several solar systems and numerous planets, and the shooter gameplay is pretty good as well. Shame this one never came to the west, as its scope and design are extremely impressive. A North American port was planned but never released. Battlemania Dai Ginjo or Battlemania 2 is a sequel to the original Battlemania which saw a North American release as Troubleshooter. This is a shooter featuring jetpacking ladies flying around blasting enemies with huge guns. Very much like Forgotten Worlds in essence, but this is faster and has much better graphics with good colours and a lot going on with enemies and explosions etc. You start off alone, then you're joined by a friend as she enters in spectacular fashion by driving a car through the window of a skyscraper, as you do. You can collect an option as well to add to your firepower, and you have a special attack which sends electricity shooting around the screen, which recharges after each use, indicated by a bar at the top right of the screen. There is an English patch if you want to keep up with the story, but it's perfectly playable without it. This is just a wicked shooter that's fast and fun, and it's quite the spectacle. Rent a Hero is another game that would be completely impenetrable without a language patch. Luckily for us, an English patch ROM is available. This is another Mega Drive exclusive title. The tongue in cheek story follows a young lad who accidentally comes into possession of a super suit that gives him incredible strength and decides to become a superhero for hire to make some cash. Unlike most RPGs, fights take place in the form of 2D versus fighting. It's a quirky take on the genre, and definitely one for RPG fans to check out if you download the English patched ROM. Rainbow Islands Extra is another one that I'm surprised didn't leave Japan given its appeal in the West. Not much to say about this one, it's a decent conversion of Rainbow Islands. Used to love this on my Amiga as a kid, a good fun platform game from the Bubble Bobble series, and it's all in English. The extra in the title refers to an extra mode featured in this version which reorders things. 
Veritex is a Mega Drive exclusive vertical shooter. It's quite slow, but actually really fun despite this. Although the colour palette can be a bit bland at times, it has some nice visual tricks going on and the music is fantastic. Quite hard, especially if you die and your firepower resets. Again, all menu options are in English, so no barrier here, definitely worth a bash. Bishoujo Senshi Sailor Moon is a beat-em-up based on the Sailor Moon series. This was released on the Mega Drive in 1994, but came to the Super Famicom in 93. That version did get a PAL Super Nintendo port in 94, but bizarrely it was only released in France. There's an English patch for this one, although you can play it without one. They've done such a great job on the language patch here, not only does it change the in-game character dialogue and cutscenes to English, but it even changes some of the background text during the levels. You can choose from five schoolgirls to play as, each with slightly different attacks, like one has a whip. This is becoming some weird male fantasy already and we haven't even started the game. But whichever you choose, the combat feels largely the same. You have an attack, kick and jump button and you can do flying kicks. It becomes monotonous pretty quickly. There are special attacks, but they deplete your health like in Streets of Rage 2, so you can't use them often. This game looks so good. The characters are large and drawn very well, as are the cutscene images. They clearly put a lot of effort into the aesthetics. Sadly, the gameplay doesn't meet the same high standard. It's just so boring and slow. Setting the game on easy makes it slightly less tedious as enemies die quicker, but enemies tend to come at you a couple at a time. This sometimes leaves you waiting around on screen for an enemy that's wandered off outside the viewable area, which just ruins what little pace the game has. I wanted to love this game, but it really let me down. Divine Ceiling is an unofficial and mediocre vertical shooter which combines shoot 'em up with soft pawn hentai. I've recently covered this one in a separate video, so check that out if you're interested. The gist is you're rescuing ladies who reward you by stripping off and then having relations with you. There's no need to understand Japanese unless you want to understand the dialogue between levels during the conversations which occur while the ladies take their clothes off. Still, I'd imagine it is pretty funny if you do understand what they're saying. Not a great shooter though. Pulseman is arguably the best Japanese exclusive platformer on the Mega Drive. This is another game developed by Game Freak. The presentation is outstanding from the vibrant graphics and chunky sprites, the varied and detailed soundtrack and excellent digitized speech right down to the snazzy pink box art. Pulseman gets his name from the fact that he harnesses the power of electricity. With it he can shoot projectiles and perform dash moves. You need to charge him up like a dynamo first, which is done simply by running, at which point you'll see electricity coursing through his body. He can also transform into pure electricity in order to travel along wires. The levels are all very different in style and have detailed backgrounds and some interesting themes. The soundtrack is absolutely superb too. There's an English patch for this one, but it's fully playable without it as the menus are in English, and to be honest the Japanese text in-game is minimal anyway pretty fun platform game that manages to show off the Mega Drive's capabilities quite well while feeling very Mega Drive at the same time. Although a Japanese physical exclusive, it did come to Sega Channel in North America in 1995 and was later released on Virtual Console in Europe and North America in 2009. Panorama Cotton is the third entry in the Cotton series of shoot'em ups. Rather than being a 2D side-scroller, this one is a rail shooter akin to games like Panzer Dragoon, more like Rainbow Cotton on the Dreamcast than the rest of the series. There's a small bit of Japanese text for the story, but you don't really need this and all the menus are in English. Although I prefer the horizontal cotton games, this is actually pretty fun. Visually, it's quite impressive for a Mega Drive game with you flying your broom through 3D levels with a well-created sense of depth to them. I mentioned Pocky and Rocky earlier when talking about Undeadline, but Twinkle Tail is really like Pocky and Rocky as it's more of a run and gun than a shooter. In this console exclusive you play as this little wizard and have three magical attacks. One fires a spread shot of what look like shuriken, a forward facing shot and a homing shot. 
These can be switched between on the fly, and finding which attack suits each portion of the game is key to succeeding. Each can be upgraded up to level 3, and the level of power each attack has is indicated on the right hand side of the screen. At first you're allowed 3 hits before you lose a life, again shown on the right, but this can be increased as the game progresses. When you take a hit you lose one of your orange health bars, and the attack you're currently using also loses a level. You can also collect power-ups which let you unleash a screen filling special attack. Twinkletail nails it on all fronts. Fast and challenging gameplay, stunning graphics, good sound, this is one of my favourite games on the list by far, and although it's really tough, it rarely feels unfair. Bioship Paladin is an arcade port and quite an interesting horizontal shooter. Absolutely no Japanese text here from what I've seen. It seems really slow at first, and well, it is, but it has some unique shot types and power-ups that make it quite fun. The first mechanic is that you collect these power-ups with L on them. These increase your health and the size of your ship. There are three sizes, so you can see here when you're at your largest, your health bar at the top is three different colours, each representing a stage of your ship's size. Once your health drops below one of the sections, your ship decreases in size until it's all depleted, at which point you die of course. Second are these golden orbs. Collecting these gives you like fixed options that attach to your ship, but they're static and don't fly around independently. These add considerable extra firepower, and you can attach up to six of these to your ship at one time. These A power-ups send a spinning pyramid around the screen attacking enemies. It only lasts for 20 seconds, indicated by a timer at the top, but it's quite powerful while it lasts. As well as your standard forward shot, which can be charged up for a more powerful attack, you also have another attack with a crosshair. This lets you precisely target enemies. You can switch between the standard and crosshair shot types by pressing C. Not seen that in any other shooters, so it's an interesting idea. Not my favourite shooter here, but its uniqueness makes it worth checking out. Cutie Suzuki No Ringside Angel is a side-on wrestling game, again exclusive to the console. Unfortunately, the text for the moves is in Japanese as you start the level, so I had no idea what I was selecting. Still, I was hopeful I could work out how to play despite this. Nope. I had no idea what I was doing and kept getting thrown out of the ring. Ended up just mashing buttons, which did not work. Darwin 4081 is another vertical shooter that has a forward firing mode for airborne enemies and a bomb attack for ground based enemies. Released in 1990, it's a port of the 1987 Data East arcade game Super Real Darwin. Again, this one seems to be entirely in English. What makes this unique is the power-ups cause your ship to evolve, which change its shape and shot type. You can also grab DNA, which just increases your shot power up to 9 levels. It's an okay but reasonably forgettable shooter. Ultraman is a terrible fighting game, based on the character Ultraman. Released in 1993, it's actually a port of a 1992 original on the Super Famicom. Another title that was also published in Korea by Samsung. There's a bit of Japanese, but nothing that will stop you playing the game, which is a shame, because any reason to avoid this game is a blessing. After you damage your enemy a certain amount, the text finish appears in their health bar, but for the life of me I couldn't work out how to do it, so I couldn't defeat the first enemy. Utter rubbish anyway. The New Zealand story is an arcade port and another one that any westerners that had a home computer in the late 80s will likely be familiar with. Just like Rainbow Islands, this is a really good port and I'm equally surprised that this never got a release over here. What little text there is in the game is in English, but it's so minimal it wouldn't make a difference if it wasn't. The levels for this version were actually based on the prototype for the arcade game. Gameplay is pretty simple, guide your little kiwi around the levels, rescuing your bird friends and riding on various hovering devices. Brilliant fun. Curse is another shooter exclusive to the Mega Drive. It would be a great side-scrolling shooter if it wasn't so bloody hard, like unnecessarily hard. There are constantly enemies flying at you at speed, enemies attacking from behind, bullets and missiles flying around the screen as well, it's so hectic it makes it very tricky to avoid everything. 
Other than that, it has some good power-ups, which include the power and alter the style of your shot, and has decent enough graphics and sound. Perhaps Curse's curse is its difficulty. It's totally accessible in terms of language though, so if you like a real challenge, then give this a try. There are two Yu Yu Hakusho games on the Japanese Mega Drive. The only playable one is Yu Yu Hakusho Makyo Titsusen, a fantastic versus fighter as Mega Drive fighters go. Based on the Yu Yu Hakusho manga, it has a reasonably large roster of 11 playable characters, all of which manage to feel different than the next. Graphics are good, but the animation is exceptional for the Mega Drive. It feels responsive, which is a welcome change from many of the console's fighters which can feel sluggish. The special moves are easy enough to pull off, and they are again really varied from character to character and look great. This was developed by Treasure, which might explain its high quality, and was the fourth of six games they developed for the Mega Drive. Their first six games full stop actually. There's also a four player option, which is crazy for a Mega Drive fighter. You can actually jump across two planes in the game, so two can fight in the foreground while two fight in the background, a feature which they expanded on later with Guardian Heroes on the Saturn. Although this one never officially left Japan, it did get a tech toy release in Brazil in 1999. This is playable in Japanese, but there's also an English patch ROM which gives you full English text throughout. So there we go, that was a selection of the Sega Mega Drive's games that never got an official release outside of Japan. Hopefully that's given you some ideas of which you want to check out, and which you want to avoid. Let me know in the comments which Japanese exclusive Mega Drive games are your favourites, if you have any. And thanks for watching.